Suzette Kilo learned in 2005 that the Fifth Amendment ultimately would not protect her home from being seized by a local government in the name of nothing more than tax revenue. The Supreme Court ruled in Kilo v. City of New London, Connecticut, that private property can be taken for increasing tax revenue. The court used a decidedly tortured definition of public use to arrive at the controversial 5-4 decision. Kilo spoke at the Cato Institute January 27, 2009, at a forum for the book Little Pink House, which tells her story. The full event is available at Cato.org. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Suzette Kilo, and the government stole my home. <laughs> First, the, the municipal government of my hometown, New London, Connecticut, stole it. Then the state of Connecticut said it was legal for them to take it. Finally, the federal government said it was constitutional to steal not only my home, but the homes of all my neighbors, and in, in fact, anyone's home for the purpose of economic development. Basically, what that means, if someone who can add more to the grand list of your town or city than you and your property can be made history. Even though 40 states have passed legislation offering some protection for home and business owners, don't think your property is safe because it is not. Over 10 years ago, I was lucky enough to, to find a great deal on a house with a terrific view of the Thames River, and the Long Island Sound, and the Atlantic Ocean in New London, Connecticut. I spent every spare moment fixing it up and making it the kind of home I had always dreamed of. I'm sure you've heard the expression, location, location, location. Well, this was the wrong location, only I didn't know it yet. Until I picked up the paper one morning in 1998 and discovered that Pfizer Pharmaceutical was coming to town. And one of the things that Pfizer did not want, according to the Pfizer executive, who just happened to be the husband of Claire Gaudiani, the president of New London Development Corporation, was to look out their windows and see tenement buildings. <clears throat> Maybe we did not live in grand manners that the Pfizer, to, Pfizer executives lived in, but our homes were well cared for, we paid our taxes, and we lived in a neighborhood that was comfortable for us. But we weren't going to be comfortable for long. For 10 long years, we fought to keep our homes, we fought the media, we fought in the media, we fought in the city council and the legislative offices, we fought in the courts, we won the support of the public, but the politicians made our lives hell. Eviction notices were posted on our doors Thanksgiving Eve, our neighbors' homes were demolished around us, our streets were shut down, some of us became ill, some of us even died. Even the air was difficult to breathe from the demolitions and the blasting around us. But we never gave up because we believed that this land was our land until the United States Supreme Court told us and the world differently. What the Supreme Court basically said was our land was only our land until someone else could make better use of it and pay more taxes. Even though we, the plaintiffs in Kelo versus New London case, lost our personal battle, the war is still being fought. As a result of the Supreme Court's unbelievable ruling, a majority of the states have passed legislation offering more protection to American property owners. Probably everyone who has ever given a speech hopes that something he or she says will be worth remembering. And I hope you remember this. If it's true that it takes an entire village to raise a child, then we and our children are in serious trouble. Although 42 states have passed laws providing more protection against the, use, the abuse of eminent domain, there are still many places where neighborhoods are destroyed to make way for malls, hotels, and spas. And the people who suffer the most are not only the American children, but also our elderly. Chief Joseph of the Nez Pierce Indians said, the white man made us many promises, but he kept only one. He said he'd take our land and he did. This still continues. Let just be the generation, be the one to bring this terrible abuse to an end. Thank you. 
Suzette Kilo was the lead plaintiff in the landmark 2005 Supreme Court case Kilo v. City of New London, Connecticut. You can hear the full book forum at our website, cato.org.